people on this call this morning. You guys are studs, man. A hundred people on the call early in the morning. You guys, leadership is phenomenal. And I'm looking through and I'm like, whoa, I know who that person is. I know who that person is. So I'm like super nervous now and everything because there's so many studs on the call. But uh, definitely shout out to you guys. You guys are listening, are so blessed to be a part of this hierarchy that you're a part of. I mean, they are just rolling through everything. They're going to kill it in this business. I'm so excited about where they're going, their leadership. Um, I'm so blessed to know, you know, Melinda as a friend and just, I'm so excited about where they're going. And you guys are so blessed to be a part of their team. The fact that you have their phone number is a huge deal. There's people that don't have their number that would love to just have them pour into them. And you guys are blessed to know them and be coached by them. So don't take that lightly. They're incredible, incredible people. And uh, man, we're just seeing them get started. They're just going to be SNSD, Circle of Champions, Wall of Fame, you know, million dollar earners, six million dollar earners. It doesn't even exist yet. I'm speaking that all over them because they're incredible people. So you guys are so blessed, right? So I started the business back in uh, August 2010. I was actually a full-time social worker. Okay, I was making no money. I was making $34,000 a year. I had two jobs. I had a master's degree, $78,000 of student loan debt, $78,000. So I had no money. I couldn't rub two pennies together. I was broke, right? But the bad thing is I was not just broke. I was broke and bougie because I was like, I don't want to do primary care. That's a pyramid. Like I was so negative about it, right? And I was so broke. So when I, so my friend came to me in 2008 about it, but I said no, because I didn't see a change in her, right? That's the first nugget. If you're new, guys, you gotta, you gotta, this has to be something new about you. If you're starting this business, you can't be the same old, you know, Don, you can't be the same old Jane. You have to be different. You have to see a change in you. You have to see you're more professional. You're, you're more serious about this. It can't be just another hobby, another thing. You have to see a change in you, right? So I didn't see that change in my friend. I just saw she was the same girl from college. I was like, oh, my God. And I didn't understand what she meant. She was like, man, we got a picnic with Ivan Earl, and I'm getting promoted. I was like, who gets promoted at a picnic? Who's Ivan Earl? Like, I didn't know what the hell she was talking about. I was so confused. So, you know, I had no idea what was going on. So I said no to her for two years. Fast forward to 2010, somebody else approached me about the business. As soon as they said, I was like, Primerica? Ew, I don't want to do that. That's a pyramid scheme. All you guys do is sell life insurance. That's stupid. I don't want to do that. I have a master's degree. Right? I was so negative about it. So negative. But again, man, I was broken bougie. Like, that doesn't go together. You can't be like that. So I was like, man, let me just give it a shot. Whatever. Let me see. So I came on board. Um, I understood the word coachability because I come from a track and field background. So, you know, a coach said do a three, 300 to get ready for the 200. I was like, all right, let me just go ahead and do it. So I always wanted to be the best. I was the captain of the track team. I was in a pen relay since I was 15. I have two school records in my high school. Like I just always wanted to be the best. So when they said coachability, that's when it sparked for me. So I was like, okay, I got it. So when I started, if you guys are brand new and your coach is like, look, we got to do, you know, your top 25 list. I was crazy enough to do a top 94 list. I made a list of 94 people. Yes, I did. And I still have it because I show it to my people when I'm sure it's, it's in another room. But I made a list of 94 people. From that list, I got teammates. I got clients. I got referrals. From that list was my first death claim. From that list. And it was only 10 months that I was in the business. So early on, I knew this was the real deal. Early on, I was like, wow, this is like, this is some real stuff. You know what I'm saying? So very, very early on, I understood what to do. Whatever they coached me to do, I did it times 10. I just was, I just wanted to be the best. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I just, I just had that confidence, right? I was just like, let me just do it. You know, when I took my test the first time, I failed. When I took my test the second time, I failed. When I took my test the third time, I finally passed. But when I first took it, I said, I'm going to knock that test out. It's going to be easy. I need to study. I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna get it done. I'm going to pass it. I was just in the back barking, you know, saying all stuff. They're I mean, like, this girl needs to calm down. But I just always had that, you know, that that drive and that hunger just to be number one, to beat everybody, to, to do it. So, guys, if you're new, you know, and you took your test, you didn't pass, who cares? Take it again. That's fine. Just take it again. The company is going to pay for you. The people that are on your in your corner. Your coaches, your upline, your trainers, they're pushing you to get it done. If you didn't pass the first time, it's fine. A lot of million dollar earners didn't pass they test the first time. So you're in good company, okay? Even with my series six, <coughs> excuse me, my series six, I didn't pass until, oh my God, the fifth time. No, the sixth 
time, my series 63, my second time, and my 26, not only did I fail it the first couple times, I had to go to Florida, no, to Georgia. You guys are in Florida. I'm all excited because I'm like, oh, I want to be in Florida. I had to go all the way to Georgia to do this like RVP testing, uh, like group tutoring session. Went back to Philadelphia, failed it again. Went back to Georgia again, had one-on-one -on -one coaching with the head of securities and passed it in Georgia with a 70 on a dot. Baby, listen, <laughs> that was crazy. So it's okay if you don't pass the first time, just do it again, have a good spirit about it, stay positive, keep running your race, keep pushing, you just get it done, all right? So um, I was still part-time, my fifth month license in Prime America, guys, I made $6,100. How the heck did I do that? I went to a big event. So important to go to big events. Shout out to you guys being on here early in the morning. Over 112 people. I mean, what leadership you guys have. That's incredible. Get that many people on a morning call. That's a huge deal, guys. But I went to a big event and I saw this young guy. Some of you guys might remember this young guy in Maryland named Aquil Romano. And he was recruiting a massive amount of people. And he was 19 years old. So I'm sitting in the audience. I think at the time I was maybe like 27, 28. And I was in the audience looking and I was like, if this kid, 19 years old, can recruit all of these people, I can do the same thing, if not better. So I went back and I recruited four directs. I wrote over 13,000 in personal production, made that 6,100. I broke the office record in premium. I didn't, I was just, I was just like putting my head down, just focus on winning. And you know, ended up breaking a record in the office. So John laughing my up, he put that on the uh, board in front of the room during training. And I was like, man, I know everybody else need more than that. He was like, this girl brand new, she's part-time, she's a social worker, and she made more money than you guys, and I was like, what? Okay, this thing must really work, this is crazy, I'm not really even doing anything, yeah, I'm still part-time, I'm just doing it here and there, so guys, I saved up $10,000, prime America money, I quit my jobs, I went full-time June 2011, and I haven't had a job since, I've been job-free since 2011, it's a great feeling, right, so no jobs since 2011, so I quit my jobs, um, I went full-time, went to convention, came back to convention, super excited, brand new full-timer. Um, I just put my head down. I went RVP my second year in the business, started making 50000 a year, started making 100000 a year, 200000 a year. Last month, clicked over two fifty. dollars uh, By the end of next month, I'll be at ownership. The end of the year, I'll be at $500,000. And it's exciting because last month, the company paid me $40,900. I got an $18,000 bonus check. I used to make $34,000 a year with two jobs. I have a six-month-old daughter. I'm home all day with her. And the company had the nerve to pay this girl from West Philly $40,900. What the heck, guys? We all have that same opportunity. We all had that same opportunity. We have so many things here to help cultivate that, to coach you. You guys have your coaches, your upline. We have Women in Primary. We have AALC, African American Leadership Council. We have HALC, Hispanic American Leadership Council. We have so many things to help. It's just, you can't, you can't lose. You know, if you plug into the things that's here and that's available for you, you just cannot lose. And I want to say this one thing too, before I go into the, the things I'm going to say, different success tips. The people that are really going to be successful are the ones that have their camera on. And that seems so small and so minuscule. But the people that have their camera on and are paying attention and listening and taking notes and paying attention this morning, we all have stuff going on. Listen, I have stuff going on all the time. I'm get, I get thrown up on every day, like multiple times a day, right? I'll be doing an appointment and the client will see me tilt my camera up like this. That's because I'm nursing my daughter. I will still do the appointment. Listen, I will be nursing my daughter for and my daughter right then and there on the appointment not saying oh can we reschedule please what's your account number what's your routing number okay oh let me burp her okay what's, the, what's your social you know what i'm saying like we're gonna get this done so period doesn't matter what's going on it, no by any means necessary the people that have their camera on shout out to you guys because you guys are going to be the real winners you make no excuse i think that's such a big deal it's so small but it's a big deal and uh, you know nobody likes to speak to a black screen everybody likes to see another face nodding and talking right so when people are asked to speak on zoom i always pay attention to the ones that have their 
camera on because I know I'm going to see them at convention walk across the stage. I know I'm going to see that same face getting their $100,000 ring. I know I'm going to see that same face at a big event at Women in Prime America or AALC or HALC. I'm going to see them in a big stage getting a diamond, right? I know that already. So I'm taking note of everybody I see on camera because I know I'm going to see them again on stage getting it done. So here's some successful qualities, guys. One of the first thing, guys, is persist until successful. One of the most persistent people in the world are children, right? Mom, can I have a cookie? Mom, can I have a cookie? Mom, can I have a cookie? Damn, sit down. No, you can't have a cookie. You gotta eat some apples, right? <laughs> but they're so persistent, right? Persistence is a great advantage. Kids, man, we gotta learn a lot from kids. Persistence, right? They are so persistent. They wanna get it done by any means necessary. They're gonna keep asking, keep bugging you, keep talking to you, right? That's what a successful person is. They're very persistent. A lot of my clients say to me, man, you are persistent. You are a persistent lady. When they finally meet with me and they thank me about showing them the information they had no idea about, showing them about how their policy is ripping them off, showing them about all the things that they had no idea about, that they could start saving money for just 25 months. They have no idea. So when you're persistent, you finally get the results that you want. You finally are able to get the people that you want on your team. You're finally able to see what you can actually become, right? Maya Angelou has this quote, um, if you're always trying to be normal, you'll never know how amazing you can be, right? So when you're persistent and you're getting the things done that you want to get done, you're calling that one extra person, you're prospecting that guy in a suit that you think might already be too good, right? If you're persistent and just getting after it, man, everything starts to come together. So the second thing, guys, be unreasonable. <laughs> be unreasonable. Have big goals. Have unrealistic goals and dreams. Think big right? Think huge. When you have people come on your team, if you think it's too small and they think big like me, I'm going to say, well, I'm not going to be able to join her team. She's thinking too small. How's my goals going to fit in her goals? If she just want to do 10 by 10, I want to do 20 by 20. So how, how's this going to work, right? So you got to think big. You got to be unreasonable. Have your dream so big it scares you. Talk about it. Have the courage. Have the confidence to say it in front of a room. I remember as a brand, before I went RVP, I said in front of a room of all men, and, and there were, it was two other RVPs in the front of the room. I said, I, when I go RVP, I'm going to beat both of you guys. And they laughed at me. And guess what? I beat both of them to the second diamond. I beat both of them on scoreboard. We got the, the, the uh, uh, record in Pennsylvania for production. And we beat both of them. You got to be bold about it. You got to say, listen, this is what I'm going to get done. Have big goals. Have big dreams. Say it out loud. Have courage to do it. And then put the work in it and go do it and get it done. Right? It don't mean nothing if you ain't gonna put no action behind it. Then it's just fluff. It's just, oh, she's just saying stuff, whatever. She's phony, right? She's just blowing smoke. If you say it and you say it with confidence and you go out there and you get it done, you put the action in, please, people have no, no other thing but to respect you and watch you go do it and know that it's gonna get done. Because when you start saying stuff, they're gonna say, oh, well, she said it, so it's definitely gonna happen, right? That team watched me go from nothing. When I gave birth to my baby girl, Trinity, I had to get a C-section. So I was out, like out, out, okay? I couldn't do nothing. So January, for the first time in my life in primary, I had zero by zero. I was disgusted. Well, I just threw up a little bit saying zero by zero. I was terrible. Oh my God, that was horrible. So when I came back in February, I had nothing going on. People quit, right? Everybody pretended to have a baby, right? Apparently everybody had a C-section, okay? So everybody quit, all types of stuff. I had to rebuild my business. Notice I didn't get down and say, oh no, what am I going to do? I said, I'm going to get it done because my goal is to hit quarter million at this date, ownership at this date, half a million at this date, so I'm going to go get it done. Came back to the office, made at least 350 phone calls. Why do I know the amount? Because I had a whole Excel spreadsheet, and it was at least 350 people on there. Only did one by 1,800 in February. But because I know when you work hard, and you are persistent, and you're consistent, and you focus on what you need to do, it's going to pop the following month is five by 8,000. Following month, over 14,000, 15,000. I never wrote more than 14,000. I wrote over 20,000 since I had my daughter. That's never happened before because I know what it takes. I know what you're supposed to do. If you're consistent, stuff starts to pop. We broke two personal best records in recruiting with the pandemic after coming back with nothing. I have two other people on my team that's active. Everybody else is brand new. Everybody else quit and we got it done. Broke a personal best record in recruiting. Broke the record in the state of Pennsylvania for recruits through first. Don't play with me. We're going to get this done. If I say I'm going to do something, we're going to get it done regardless, okay? Burping the baby, feeding the baby, changing the baby, everything 
we got it done. So if I can do that, you guys can do way, 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 way more, guys. So you got to think big. Don't allow what's going on to make your dreams get smaller. I still had the goal to hit a quarter million at the date. And I, I knew exactly what I needed to do. And I fought hard and got it done. I know exactly what I got to do for ownership. So I'm going to fight hard and I'm going to get it done. Matter of fact, I know I need to make forty four nine ninety this month. Next month, forty four thousand nine ninety, and that's three hundred. So I know exactly what I need to do. I'm gonna get it done. Period. And it's going to happen, right? So you gotta have some big goals and not let nothing stop you. Yeah, I could have been like, oh man, I had the C section. I had my daughter. Let me just take you know four months off and just relax. And let me just you know, no, I had a goal, right? I had to get things done. Period. Right. So you just have to go out there and do it, guys. The other thing, guys, take action take action. Highly successful people take unbelievable amounts of action. They take action, right? They don't sit around and think. They don't have to figure out, oh, let me see what I need to do. Let me see what, how, the best plan of attack. Let me see what. No, they just go do it. They take action, right? They don't think about if it's a better way, if it's an easier way. Guys, the people that came before you already thought about that. They already thought of whatever you might be thinking. They thought about that already and they did it already. Okay, you go out there and you take the action. You follow what they're saying. Now you got to go ahead and do it. Take the action steps to get it done, guys. Unsuccessful people talk about a plan of action and they never get around to doing it. They talk about what they're going to do. They write it down. They think about it. They think about it some more. They think about it some more and they never do it. Take action. It is so, so, so important, guys. You got to commit. You got to commit. How ridiculous would it sound? And Brian said to Melinda, hey, you know what? I really love you and everything. Let me just, you know, we'll get married. But let me just see how this goes. Like, are you crazy? Melinda would have been like, Brian, are you crazy? No, we in this for the long run, man, right? You got to commit. Commit like it's a marriage. Commit like you're married to this thing. You have to commit. Unsuccessful people rarely commit. They always talk about, I'm trying. I hope. I'll see. Please. Stuff like that doesn't even come out of successful people's mouths, right? They're always talking about, I'm going to do, I'm committed. This is what I'm going to do. Successful people commit and they put it all on the line, okay? Successful people see the last, see the problems and they turn it into solutions. They see, okay, man, okay, now we're 100% on Zoom. Let's change it up. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and get some more licenses in other states. Let me go ahead and recruit people all across the country. Let me get some people in Puerto Rico. Let me get some people in Canada. Let me get some people in Guam, right? Let me get the job done, right? Before this whole pandemic hit, I was only in Pennsylvania. I had one girl in Virginia, one girl in uh, Delaware. Guys, we're in like 16, 17 different states right now. I'm licensed in 11 states. I never thought I was going to be a license in 11 states. In counting, you know, as soon as California stops playing with me, I'll be in 12 states. California taking forever. So, I'm going to be in 12 states, hopefully by the end of this week, okay? So we're in 11, we're in like 14, 15 different states. I'm licensed in 12. You got to commit, right? If I wasn't committed, I would have been like, oh, let me just wait. You know, I don't know how it's going to go. No, man, you go out there and get it done. You got to do whatever is necessary. Whatever you said is going to happen, you got to make it happen. Guys, we got two days left for month end. That's it. So you have to do whatever it takes, guys. You don't make excuses when it gets too hard. You don't think about what you're going to say. Oh, you know what? I didn't make it happen because this and that. No, you say I made it happen because I did this. I was tired, but I made that extra phone call. I went out there and I talked to one other person. I made that, you know, a uh, person on my, in my phone book that was real heavy to pick up the phone. I called them, right? You do whatever you got to do. Smart people usually finish last. The people that take action win. I'm telling you, you can't just think, 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 think. You got to take that action and do it. And the last thing, guys, you got to demonstrate courage. This is how you get respect. You got to demonstrate courage. A lot of people ask me, how you do this business as a woman? I don't do this business as a woman. I do it as a business person, okay? It doesn't matter that I'm a woman. It doesn't matter that I'm black. Well, it I'm black, but you know what I'm saying. Like, the company pays you based on your code number, not based on if you're black, white, skinny, fat, tall, short. That old young, it doesn't matter. They pay you based on your work ethic. They pay you based on what you do. If you have courage and you're saying what you're going to do and you go out there and execute it, people have no choice but respect you. Right? Sometimes people say, oh my God, your RVPs are men. How did you train men? Because they respect me. They see what I'm doing. They say, okay, this lady knows what she's talking about. She knows what she's doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen. I'm going to pay attention, right? So you got to have that courage, guys. You got to have have that courage. See, successful people have confidence and conviction. They have it. You can tell just by someone's talking if they're successful. If they're putting their head down, they're nervous, they're not making eye contact, 
They're so scared to say what they're going to do. They're nervous to even talk about their goals, right? You got to go out there and you declare what you're going to do. Talk about your goals. Say it to the mountaintops. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell them your RVP did. Tell them when you're going to take your license and pass. Tell them when you're going to be in the ring. Tell them when you're going to make a million dollars a year. Tell them. They're going to tell you that they're either going to believe you or they're not going to believe you and one of you is going to be right. Make sure it's you. Make sure it's you. All right. So, guys, if you guys want me to touch on anything else or if you have any questions or anything, I'm definitely you know, happy to help with that. Hopefully that helped. Yeah, Jackie, that was so awesome. You're a trip, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was about to say, man, I never heard so many people like get sick or their mama got sick or right. their daddy got sick or they got called right. into work. It's like, you never got called into work before. What are you mm -hmm. talking about? Right, right, right. But my question to you would be this. Um, you know, I know you come from like a sports background and so did I. I, mm -hmm. I ran track myself. I ran hurdles and did high jump. Awesome. And uh, what would you, what advice would you give the people that don't come from like a competitive background and they come into like a business like ours that's like very competitive and everybody's like, you know, trying to get on the leaderboards and whatnot. Mm -hmm. What type of advice would you give them to get into the game? Yeah, the crazy part is all of us are, all of us have that innate um, thing inside of us that makes us competitive. So here's an example. Let's say it's you and your friend and you guys are thinking about going out to eat and you want to go to get seafood and your friend wants to go get Italian. You're, com you're competing to see like who's gonna win. Or let's say you, when you're, one of your friends wants to go see a movie, you wanna go see an adventure movie and they wanna go see a romantic movie. You're competing to see like who's gonna win. So all of us are competitive. You just have to like pull it out of you and realize that we compete on everything all the time. If you're married, you were competitive. You're competing for your, your spouse's love, right? You're, everybody's competitive. You just have to figure out like how to kind of get inside and figure out what they're competitive about but we all have it in us like when people say oh i'm not competitive like yes you are how did you live where you live how'd you get the car you drive how did, all of that stuff you have to compete for it's, it's it's all in us so you just have to give them different examples like that and then they'll say oh yeah yeah, yeah i could actually compete for that okay yeah I get it. all right yeah i am competitive <laughs> so you know things like that and then also little um concepts like whoever does this and this it's like an amazon gift card or something like that and then they start to realize that they actually are competitive and um, even like little game nights, like I'm doing a game night with my team on Zoom just to see who is competitive. Some of the people that's new and I don't even know who that I've never even met so many of the people now on the team, like at all. And um, just to have like a little game night and then you see kind of who's competitive and you say, oh, that person's actually kind of bloodthirsty. OK, <laughs> you see who they are and you figure it out that way, too. So those are some ways that we see who's actually competitive. Yeah, my lovely uh, wife has a question for you, but we live like every day, like it's our honeymoon. I love it. That's awesome. I'm still in love. To, to I'm more in love with her today than that I was awesome. 14 years ago. I was. I was just telling my husband. I don't know if she feels love. the same, but I'm more in love he with does. her. <laughs> she does. I was just telling my husband because he came in with um, the baby because I, I had to nurse her real quick before I got on. And I was like, I'm about to do a call for Melinda. He was like, Melinda Turner. I was like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, she's cool. So yeah, everybody loves her. Everybody loves you guys. You guys are awesome. That's so funny. That's so funny. Um, so what I do love him too, by the way, but um, <laughs> um, he loves me because I'm a workhorse. I'm like you. There's no stopping. But we got a lot of workhorses on the line, specifically women. You know, probably half the, the chat is women, you know, and I feel like for women, we have this extra thing that is like, okay, not only do I need to be a good businesswoman and make money, and, but I also, I got to be a good mom and I got to spend mm, time with my kids. Right. I got I to gotta nurture them. I got to play with them. I got to snuggle with them. And I got to make sure my house is on order. Mm. I have to make sure the groceries are bought. I need to make sure, you know, so we have like this list that's kind of always running through our head, right? Of everything mm. we have to do. So my question for you is like, how do you kind of prioritize that in your life? You know, specifically being a woman and, and kind of like your schedule. How do you get the things done you get done and also do the 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 mom and the wife things you need to do yeah i'm actually gonna pull this up i just did a talk on that which is crazy um one thing i will say and this does sound kind of bougie but <laughs> i wanted to do this for a very long time um when i grew up my dad had me very very disciplined and i had to do a lot of housework like a lot 
And I always would say like, man, when I like make it or when I start making more money, I'm not doing any of that crap. So I don't, I don't do any of that. I have maids that come in. So that's like for one thing, keep it the house clean and stuff. I don't do any of that. I'm not scrubbing nobody's toilet. I'm not doing none of that. <laughs> I don't even clean a microwave out. Like I tell them exactly what to do and they do it. I'm not doing any of that. I, I refuse. So um, I want to share my screen. Let's see. Seven. Okay, let's see if I can share my screen. All right, so this is um, this is my schedule. This is the real deal schedule. So it sounds like really sick, but this is actually it. I mean, this is really what it is, okay? So this is wake up early in the morning to nurse, wake up again to nurse, 3.30, <laughs> 5 o'clock, she'll wake up, crawl on me, kiss me, but she the way she kisses is just opening her mouth and drooling on my nose. So that's how she wakes up to, to just do that. She won't go back to sleep at the five. 6.30, I get out of bed, wash her, nurse her, jump in the shower, get dressed. I do an extra morning call for my team that wants extra coaching, like in-depth coaching, 7.30. Then I do an eight morning call with the hierarchy. Um, then right after that, I read with her, practice her letters. Uh, she's only six months old. I just do it anyway. I don't know if she understands what I'm saying, but I just want her to be really smart. All right, 9.15 <laughs> to 11, prospecting calls. Um, then I do um, nurse the baby again. I pray that she naps. I do an op meeting every day at 12 noon for the entire hierarchy. Uh, then I do an appointment, another appointment, and nurse the baby, touch base with the team. I know this looks like so much. Oh, my gosh. But this is just what I do. It doesn't seem like a lot to me. That's what I do. Um, another appointment. Um, someday we do a phone blitz, like today, Tuesday. So we're going to do a phone blitz with the team 5 to 9 as a hierarchy. So we all get on Zoom. We put our phone on mute. And then we just call, and then in the chat, we put, got one, got one, got one, and then we see who has the most after the phone blitz. And then 6 o'clock uh, till whenever, I do more appointments. And then 9 o'clock, I exercise, and I jump in the shower, nurse the baby one more time, pray that she sleeps through the night, but she probably won't. And then I read at 1030, and then I fall asleep with the book in my hand. <laughs> usually by uh 11 or so something like that so this is like the real deal you know um of what it is the schedule this i show normally like the um the easy type like the easy the, the fluff one of just like you know when i don't have to get up super early well i do all the time but this is like another version of it um but just you know the schedule every day and every day something could happen something's different but I definitely, you know, being a wife, you know, you have to prioritize your husband. You got to give your husband love and you got to, you know, do that as part of being a wife. You got to do that. And then you have to take time with the baby. So I am all over the place. But the thing that's awesome, which I love, is that everything's on Zoom now. So I'm with them all day long. Um, you know, half the time she's on my lap as I do an appointment. Uh, I'm just kissing on her as I'm just talking to people. Sometimes that's even, it brings their, the person's wall down as I'm doing the appointment. I'm sitting with like a single mom or like a married couple and they're like, oh, your daughter's so cute. And I'm like, thanks, uh, do you want to join? So <laughs> you just, it kind of helps as well because like she's a cute patootie. But um, yeah, you have to prioritize. Um, you got to make sure. And then Sundays I just started and I was, it was so hard for me to do this. Oh my gosh. But Sundays, I literally don't do any appointments. Like Sundays, I do just, you know, focus on my husband, focus on my daughter. Sundays, I don't do any, any appointments. And that was super hard for me because I usually just go hard like every day, just like, ah, just killing it. But yeah, Sundays, I like right after I had my daughter, I was like, all right, Sundays, that's it. That's you guys day. So, but that's, that's my schedule. That's what I do every day. And, uh, it's pretty crazy, but <laughs> you can't make excuses for what you want. I got to get that ownership knocked out by next month so I can give it to, you know, my daughter. So all of that work is for something. So that's getting knocked out at the end of the month and um, after a million by the end of the year. So that's what we're going to get done. Wow, that's awesome. Hey, uh, Wealth Builders, Jason Ortiz, um, RBP, has a question. Um, I don't know who can unmute him. Um, Joe, can you unmute Jason? I don't know if I'm the host. He's unmuted now. Yeah. You guys hear me? Yeah, hey, we hear Jason. you. What's uh, up, bro? Jackie, how What's are you? Up? When I saw you, I was like, oh, no, I'm so nervous to talk in front of Jason. Oh, man. No, you <gasps> did it. You did absolutely amazing. Your daughter is so beautiful. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking the time to hop on here with us. We really appreciate it, man. I'm sure. taking tons of notes. It's absolutely fantastic. 
Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, just kind of because you were instrumental in helping your coaches, you know, John and Patty Lavin, yes. right? With I think that I think when when he was on when he was on that run, you were doing like ninety two thousand in the base, hundred thousand yes. in the base. You know, what were you focusing in on to help them go over that million? Because that's like the focus, the mindset that we're on right now. We just mm -hmm. kind of want to get on that same page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every day I looked on the leader's bull and I looked at his income. I put his income on a hierarchy group chat that I created. And I said to the hierarchy, I said, my team, my team is going to get him to the million. Y'all can come help us, but we're going to be the ones that do it. Everybody, like, Jackie, go sit down, this little girl. What is she doing? But we, man, we focused on it because every month we were like, John, you, is this the month you're going to do a million? He's like, oh, next month, oh, yeah. next month. And I'm like, what, man? We're doing it this month. So yeah. I had my team on it. We did. And that was, you know, when I got in front of the room and said, we're doing 100,000 nominations. Everybody laughed. But guys, it's great when people laugh at you. That's more fuel. For, and they literally did laugh. Like, they weren't, like, chuckling. They were, like, laughing. Like, oh, yeah, right. Like, this social worker is going to do. But we did 82,000. Then we did 91,000. We broke the record in Pennsylvania. And they got to a million. And then that was actually when I hit the second time. And mm -hmm. when you push up your coach, you're going to have a lot of success. Yep. Terry, who's now who's one of my RVPs that promoted, he makes over 200 grand now too. And he got the watch in the base shop because we were all pushing up John. So when you push up your coach, all of these great things start to happen for you. And that's so important. I'm glad you said that because people need to know that, man. And it's hard to say that as a coach, like y'all need to push me up because they don't understand like how it's actually going to help them. But yeah, when other people say it, it's, it's so important. So yeah, that, that's a great question. And it was fun to do that, man. That was, that was a big deal. And we definitely heard about it all the way down here in Florida, man. And, uh, I mean, oh. you took the way from, from Pennsylvania on down, man, for sure. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic. We That's just been our focus is, you know, uh, uh, we, we say there's, you know, there's four main mi milestones in primary case. You know, obviously getting licensed, becoming a field trainer, becoming an RVP, and then getting yeah. ownership, right? So, yes. you know, oh, yeah. now, man, uh, what's your focus to get to that that 300? Just fighting, man, every day, you know, definitely getting a lot of recruits. I know exactly how much money I need to make both months. Um, my personality type is, uh, you guys know Star System, S-T-A-R? So my personality is A-S. So I'm like extremely structured, extremely structured. So I know exactly like what I have to do every day. Um, just talking to more people, following up with clients, telling people, you know, what we got to get after it. Um, there's a lot of contests, you know, stuff like that just to push everybody. So, yeah, it's definitely going to get done by any means necessary. We're going to do that. We don't have any doubts, man. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brian, Melinda? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just got an, I wanted to just clarify with you about the Sundays off that you just mentioned. And I know you said, like, it was so hard for you. <laughs> <clears throat> so did you kind of make that decision once you hit the $250,000 mark, you said, I'm going to hit this milestone and then I'm going to take some, because all this time you've been working Sundays when you were grinding all these years, you've been working. So when did you make that yeah. decision to then take off? I made that decision when I had my daughter, yeah. like that face, man, just, she just, she tears me up, man. Like, uh, it's just such a gift from God when you have a baby and um, she just, completely changed my life you know and I, I just I was like I'm gonna give you Sunday man because like I'm with her all day long anyway but I just completely am with her the entire Sunday um it's just you know family day Sunday so that really decision happened um once I had my daughter and then um also like the one of the things I am doing when I hit ownership at the end of Ju July it sounds really weird but this is the type of girl I am we're gonna take an <laughs> I've, I've dreamed about doing this we're gonna take an RV and we're going to travel the United States and see, like, mm. you know, uh, what is that in North Dakota with all the presidents? Like, um, oh God. Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. We're going to see, you know, the San Francisco Bridge. We're going to see, you know, the Grand Canyon. Like, yeah. Arkansas Statue of Liberty. So, like, we're going to see the United States in an RV right when I hit ownership. And I'm super excited about that. But I just love stuff like that. Like, I love camping and just, I just like stuff like that. So, like, I'm like an outdoorsy tomboy and everything. But... Yeah, we're doing that when I hit ownership. So that's like the other thing I'm looking forward to. And we're going to knock that out at the end of July when it clicks over. I'm going to look online, get an RV, scrub it down with Lysol and go. So. <laughs> like, you know what's funny is that's actually, this, Brian and I have the same goal of doing that. Oh. And our, our, our daughters are 15, 17, and 21. Wow, so. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I love that. We're almost empty nesters. We're in the opposite phase of you. But so basically, I mean, you were already making 
15 to $20,000 a month. You already have house cleaners. You already had kind of, you know, financially set. And then you said, okay, I'm going to take this time and be with my daughter. So I just yeah. wanted to clarify because for being a mom, I mean, I totally get it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, working in a corporate job, yeah. I would think, okay, I'm working and now it's the weekend. So now on the weekend, I'm playing with my kids and I'm hanging mm -hmm. out with my husband because that's, and it's so hard for us to break that cycle, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and I just remember one time I listened to Tanya Poe and she said, you don't need to take days off. You can just take hours, hours off. off. Oh yeah. You yep. remember that one too. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, that's why I was oh, like, oh dang. no, I shouldn't do Sunday. Like I'll be such a like slack and I'll be like, so like lazy if I do Sunday, but I'm just like, man, whatever. Like no, I, I'm doing you're good. so I can, you know, have freedom. So yeah, you're good. So that's kind of the decision that I made is okay. I'm just going to take, you know, two hours and go on a date with my daughter and do, you know, Definitely. and, and when your, your daughter gets older, that quality time, yes. you know, is better anyways than every day, you know, mm -hmm. but I love that. I love that. So we're going to bring up our coach, um, uh, Ed Ortiz, our, wow. and he wants to, to close out the meeting and just say a few things. So I don't know if I need to be the one to un unmute him, but he just wanted to, to chat with you for a minute. So we're going to get him right, up, but go, thank Jerry. you so much. Wow. All right. Now I really am freaking out. Oh God. This is too much. You guys, uh, <laughs> now my hands are shaking. Hey. Oh God. Hi. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is crazy. You guys yeah, are like too Jackie. much. <laughs> wow. You guys are also you on PSN by the way. Yeah. Oh man. What's that? What's that? You guys are also on PSN. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. <laughs> But let me tell you, you are a champ. You are a champ. I, we're so proud of you, I'm telling you. I remember, let me tell you, I remember John, John Lavin years ago, <laughs> yes. and he came up to me, he came to one of the meetings, he said, man, I found me a beast, man. I found me this lady, she's gonna tear it up, she's gonna do this, this is gonna be an RVP of RVP, she's gonna be developing RVPs. And I'm like, John, come on. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he brought you up on an EPN TV show. You were in a, a district. I think you're the yep. only district that ever spoken on EPN TV. Yeah, I remember. TV. Yeah. And I was like, man, there's something going on here. And I remember from there, ma'am, you getting your ring. I remember you getting your 200,000, becoming member of the AALC. I remember when it clicked over 200. I'm like, wait a second, we got something here. And now going over 250 senior leadership council, SVP, senior vice president, Jackie, I'm so proud of you. That is so Thank you awesome. So much. John was absolutely right. He found something and you pushed him over a million. Now he's at 1.2. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely phenomenal. And I want to thank you for bringing, bringing it, bringing it today, because this is exactly what we needed. We needed to hear someone like you just, just share with the team. And thank you so much. And, and if there's anything we can do for you, hey, mi casa es su casa. You know that, okay? And uh, we thank miss you. you down here on TVL. Yeah. So, yeah. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, you. guys. Hey, listen, also, I just want to let the team know real quick here. Uh, please give it up for Jackie. Come on, give me a little hand. Give me some fingers. Give me something <laughs> out there. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you yeah. so much. Absolutely. And let me tell you guys, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, they got me speaking, okay? So remember, I'm gonna go from the fundamentals. I'm basically gonna say, hey, listen, this is how I started. Basically, the way I started this business, how we, we progressed, how I recruited someone, just like Jackie. I recruited someone who is Willis Wright, who's an RVP right now. He's in Atlanta, Georgia, $100,000 income earner. I'm gonna show you guys, this is how I did that, and how we did that, and how we've been growing together. And not only that, but Willis is going to continue on. It's going to be like a little series, okay? Part one is going to be me tomorrow, and then part two is going to be Willis, you know, picking it up as far as, hey, this is what we've done on this. And so that's going to be for tomorrow, okay? And, uh, and also, before I let Jackie know that, we just want to put some goals out there. Right now, right now, as a hierarchy, we're sitting at 382 recruits, 382. Our goal, we got to take this thing to over 400 tonight. Tonight, we got to go over 400. We're at 175,000 in premium. Tonight, we got to take this thing over 200, okay? So we got to be by tomorrow, 400 by 200, okay? So we net everyone in the game. If you have not seen a presentation, 
Here's what I'm going to challenge you. Make sure that you get with your field trainer, whoever recruited you. And I know there's a lot of folks in here that are here for the first time, probably hearing me the, for the first time. But if you have not been out, your job as a brand new person, I want you to look at your field trainer, whoever recruited you, and you tell them this. You say, hey, listen, show me this business. I, let me take you out in the field, and I want you to show me how to build this business. Okay, put that responsibility on the person who got you here. At the same time, if you recruited someone, your job is to teach that person this business at the same time, teach them and get them licensed. Get that person licensed, let's get them promoted, let's show them how to make some money, because you're gonna need some help. If we build this thing, you're gonna need some more licensed people, okay? So we gotta field train these guys, okay? So let's make sure that we, we keep the fundamentals of fundamentals, we recruit somebody, we field train them, we get them licensed, we get them promoted. Coming in, coming out, coming in, going out, okay? Let's do that thing and let's build this thing, all right? So, uh, Jackie, I cannot tell you enough. Yvonne and I are so proud of what you've been doing for our hierarchy, and we thank you so much from the bottom of our heart. And I thank all the leaders. I thank Brian and Melinda for setting this thing up. You know, blew us away when you said you're going to have Jackie. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> let's go. You know? This is blowing me away. So you, you talk so to much. me. This is crazy, man. You don't even understand. <laughs> this is like my heart's beat. Guys, you guys understand, like, a legend just talked to me and said my name. Like, I'm just like, ah. This is bananas. Thank you so much, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is crazy. Thank right, you guys. so much for having me, guys. I appreciate everything. And um, just God bless you guys. I'm excited to see you guys take it to the next level. Just get fired up about what this business can do for you and your family. And don't take any limits. It's unlimited, guys. This whole business is unlimited. It's unlimited. So thank you so much, guys. I love you all. Thanks, Bye -bye. Jackie. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll pass it back to you, Brian and Melinda. You got it. Unmute everybody. You go ahead. And All right, guys. We're going to unmute everyone. We're going to close it out like we always do. We got 48 hours to close the business. Give it everything you got to get in front of people. Recruit and close. Let's finish strong. When, I, that, when I say TTLA, you say changing lives every day. I'm just <laughs> Aviators! Yes. 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 Yes